the old school game of mystery and murder. Even if you've played in the past, you might find that the newest version is different than you remember. Here are the stats. Let's get into it. You get a game board representing the Tudor Mansion, six character tokens, the stoic Colonel Mustard, the newcomer Dr. Orchid, the scintillating Miss Scarlet, the prim and proper Mrs. Peacock, the professional Mr. Green, and the eccentric Professor Plum, six miniature weapons, the candlestick, the dagger, the lead pipe, the revolver, the rope, and the wrench. 30 cards split into six characters, six weapons, nine rooms, and nine of the new clue cards to speed things up. The case file envelope tied the true murderer's modus operandi, a pad of detective notebook sheets. Finally, two custom six-sided dice. You'll also need one pen or pencil per player, which are not included with the game. Don't blame me. Go talk to Hasbro about it. They got a lot of free time now that the My Little Pony show's over. Whomsoever correctly accuses the murderer of Mr. Body and presents the location and weapon shall be declared the sharpest sleuth as well as the winner. You know what's coming. It's the setup. First, place all six character tokens on their corresponding board spaces, regardless of how many people are playing. Now, have all the players decide which character they'll be playing. Place all of the weapons in random, separate rooms around the board. Shuffle the nine clue cards and place them in a face-down pile by the board. If you'd rather play traditional clue, throw these back in the box. Regardless, separate and shuffle the other cards into three decks by type, character, weapon, and room. Carefully slide one card from each deck into the case file envelope so that no one sees what they are. Shuffle the remaining character, weapon, and room decks together into a single deck and deal it out to all of the players. Don't worry if they don't split evenly. Hasbro didn't work that out. Give all of the players a notebook sheet and a pen slash pencil. Everyone should put the other player's initials in the box at the top of the sheet. Finally, everyone should secretly look at their cards and mark all of them off their own sheet without letting anyone see. If at any time during the game a card is revealed to you, be sure to mark it down to keep track of who didn't done it. Time to play. Starting with Miss Scarlet, or whichever player controlled character clockwise from her space, and continuing clockwise, take a turn like this. Roll the dice. If you roll a magnifying glass or two, draw a clue card for each. Read the card aloud and do what it says, then return it to the bottom of the clue deck. Then, perform one of these three movements. Move your character token the number of squares you rolled. Magnifying glasses count as one for this. Use a secret passage to move from your current room to the room the passage connects to. You can also just stay in the room you're already in. If you end your movement in a room, you must make a suggestion of who done it by saying who, what, and where the murder happened. Keep guessing again and again and again and again and again. Clue shall conclude once a player has correctly stated the character, weapon, and room in the case file envelope, or all players have been eliminated due to incorrect accusations. All right, let me explain movement. You're only allowed to move orthogonally, never diagonally. You may not go through the same square twice in one turn. You may not stop on or pass through a square occupied by another token. You may only enter rooms through doorways, but you do not need to move all of the spaces you rolled to stop in a room. You cannot exit or enter through a doorway blocked by a token. Suggestions work like this. When you stop in a room, you say out loud, I suggest character with weapon in the room you're currently in. Put the token and weapon you stated in the room with you. There is no limit to how many tokens and weapons may be in a single room. Now, the player to your left must secretly show you one of their cards that disproves your suggestion. If they have multiple, they may choose which one they'll show you. If they don't have one, the player to their left must disprove your suggestion, and so on, until all of the players have had a chance to disprove you. If none of them did, then you might be able to Accuse! Be careful with these. You only get to make one accusation per game, and it must be on your turn. You may do so right after you make your suggestion, and it doesn't need to use the room you're in. Say, out loud, I accuse character with weapon in room. Secretly look at the cards in the case file envelope. If you're correct, you did it! You solved the murder! The game ends and you win. If you're wrong, you lose. But you still get to stay in the game. Put the cards back in the envelope. 
without revealing any of them. You no longer get a turn, but you still have to show your cards to disprove other players' suggestions. Only got two players? Maybe you want to team up to figure out this twisted tale of death and deception. Here's how to make it work. During setup, after you shuffle the cards into a single deck, deal four cards separately, face down, in random rooms. You can also deal them to the corner rooms if you want the game to go faster. If you enter a room with a card, secretly look at the card and put it back in the room before making your suggestion. So that's Clue. That should cover everything. But if you still have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you liked this, please take the time to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell. It would really mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching, everybody.